I'm Bill Addison, Eater's ever-roving national critic. Indianapolis is hitting its stride as a restaurant scene. Its modern restaurants are creating dinner menus that celebrate the regional bounty and draw on flavors from around the globe. As exciting as Indianapolis is becoming, the first meal I have on my mind when I come to town is breakfast. My destination is Milk Tooth, Jonathan Brooks's postmodern diner, while offering plenty of comforts, also reveals some cutting edge creativity. Normally breakfast is kind of like a throwaway disposable meal for most chefs. It's where they use up the scraps or leftover sauces. And our goal here at Milk Tooth was really to take that fine dining mentality of buying the best ingredients possible doing as little to them as possible to really make them shine and just apply that to breakfast fare. Milk Tooth sort of came along and said, you know, here are some new flavors. There's a line at the bottom of the menu that, you know, it specifically says modifications will be politely declined. Sort of a situation where John Brooks said, trust me, you can thank me later, just eat this and Indianapolis kind of went along with it. Hoosiers, a lot of us are maybe two generations removed from hillbilly. You know, we've had a cousin who hunts. We've had rabbits in our freezer. So these are all sort of like vaguely familiar flavors and familiar ingredients to us. And we've maybe never really been as proud of them as we are now that John Brooks has started making them these delicious dishes. The signature Dutch babies are served either sweet or savory with seasonal ingredients, roasted apples and lemon caramel, or Welsh rarebit, a rich cheese sauce offset with pickled sweet corn and greens. The lamb steak burger comes with ever-changing toppings like fennel marmalade, blue cheese, and a fried egg sunny side up. When Eater's editor-in-chief Amanda Clute and I visited Indy recently, we both lost our minds over the waffle. Brooks reimagines the waffle with things like sourdough and zucchini bread as inspiration. It's both familiar and startlingly original. I will go as far as to say, it is the best waffle I have ever eaten. Being a young chef here in Indy and opening up a restaurant that I thought would push the boundaries a little bit, we certainly had to gain people's trust and that's why we have things like a waffle and a pancake on the menu that are still somewhat recognizable as breakfast food. One of my favorite things about cooking breakfast is that I can use a lot of different world influences like banh mi flavors or like a Reuben sandwich flavor or a ham and cheese flavor, just something to get a little more creative with. A huge moment for me was in that first year, we had a chopped chicken liver dish on the menu, and I remember at like 10.30 in the morning on a Sunday, just ticket after ticket rolling in for these chopped chicken livers and outselling the waffle and the pancake. And that's really when I had this moment of clarity, like, man, we've, we've kind of made it. It is a little bit harder for us to survive as a restaurant. Our profit margins are pretty slim. Our food costs, our labor costs is high. But that's what Milk Tooth is to me, is being able to provide this excellent breakfast service, this quality food that you don't see very often. But that I still really love, and my son loves, and eat on a weekly basis. I think this is a really exciting time for Indianapolis as far as the food scene goes. It continues to grow and get better and better. I feel blown away by the opportunity that I have to work with the best ingredients. But we certainly didn't set out to change the breakfast scene, but we just wanted to open up a really cool, honest little diner. And I think we've honestly retained both those goals in really unique ways. Everybody has a pizza rotation, basically, of the places you order from. And hardly anybody doesn't have Pequod's in their rotation, is the way I think of it.